Now that you've learned about when and how to use the product rule, you might be wondering why it works. Here is an example of a function, h of x, that is the product of two other functions, f of x and g of x. Before you learned about the product rule, if you had seen something like this and you were asked to compute the derivative function, h prime of x, your instinct would be to compute the derivative of f, then compute the derivative of g, and then multiply these derivatives. But as you learned, this wouldn't be correct. Instead, to compute the derivative of h, you would multiply the derivative of g by f, and then add to that the derivative of f multiplied by g. The question now is, why does the product rule work? Why do you need to use the product rule instead of just doing what seems intuitive? Let's look at what's happening a little differently. Since multiplying two things can be thought of in terms of area, I'll describe the product rule in terms of lengths and area. So I'm going to represent f of x as the length of one side of a rectangle, and I'll represent g of x as the length of another side of the rectangle. So now, h of x represents the area of this rectangle, because h is the length times the width. And then h prime of x represents how quickly the area of the rectangle changes as we change the value of x. Now, if we increase x by a tiny amount, then f of x will also change by a tiny amount. In the past, we've called this delta f. And when the change in x is small enough, we write it as df. Similarly, as we increase x by a tiny amount, then g of x will also change by a tiny amount, which we'll write as dg. Next, let's think about what happens to the area as we increase x by a tiny amount. As x increases, f of x changes by df, which creates a new rectangular region. Since df is really small, the area of this purple rectangle is also really small. Similarly, g of x changes by dg, and this creates another new rectangular region. Since dg is really small, the area of this brown rectangle is also small. Also, as x increases, the change in f and g creates a third new pink rectangular section. If we put all of these rectangles together, then we have a new, larger rectangle that includes both h of x and the amount of area that has been added to h of x when we increased x by a tiny amount. Since the area of this larger rectangle is h of x plus dh, then the area of this L-shaped region represents the dh. You might also be wondering about this tiny pink rectangle. Since both df and dg are really small, the area of this rectangle is so small that we're going to disregard it when we're thinking about the rate at which the area is increasing. Next, let's think about the area of dh. The brown rectangle has sides of length f of x and dg, so its area is dg times f of x. The purple rectangle has sides of length df and g of x, so its area is df times g of x. And the total area of dh is the sum of the areas of the brown and purple rectangles. Now our goal is to find a way to compute the derivative function of h of x. Another way to notate this derivative is dh dx. And we can get this in our current equation by dividing each side of the equation by dx. And then we'll need to do some algebra. First, remember that a fraction with a sum in the numerator can be rewritten as a sum of two fractions with a common denominator. And then when we have a product in the numerator of a fraction, we can rewrite it as a product of two fractions, where the second fraction has a denominator of 1. And then we can simplify this a bit by rewriting the terms without the denominator of 1. And then we have dh dx, dg dx, and df dx, which are each derivatives. So we can rewrite this as the derivative of h of x is equal to the derivative of g of x times f of x plus the derivative of f of x times g of x. So this is where the product rule comes from and why you'll need to use it, because f and g interact with each other when finding the rate of change of their product.